Strong of mind and spirit, the imperial fists are the emperor's shield, indomitable and unbreakable. In this video, we'll be showing you how to paint an imperial fist terminator. The colors and techniques used in this guide can be transferred to any imperial fist models in your collection. This means you can have a whole army ready to charge down the enemy on the gaming table in no time. If you're new to painting, we have a video series called the Citadel Colour Painting Essentials videos. These videos will teach you all about the basics of painting and give you the confidence to paint any miniature. The paints we've used are on screen now, and remember these are the colours of the Imperial Fists, but you can paint your miniatures however you like. Also on screen now is any additional equipment we've used, but again, feel free to use whichever brushes you're most comfortable with. The first thing we need to do is undercoat the model, and we've used white scar for this. This is a really bright undercoat, which sets us up well for the way that we'll be painting that iconic yellow armour. It's a good idea to have a pot of white scar to hand as well, just in case we need to tidy up that undercoat at any point. We're starting off with painting the black areas using Corvus Black. Some of these areas are quite tricky to reach, which is why we're doing it now, as it won't matter too much if we do make a bit of a mess. We can just take some white scar and tidy back up any mistakes. We'll be using this colour to paint the gun casing, purity seal wax, the knee pad and any undersuit details too. This is a base paint, so we need to thin it down with some water on our palette before we apply it to the miniature. Applying several thin layers avoids clogging up any of that detail. Take your time and be as neat as you can, as this will give you a better end result. However, don't worry, you can always tidy up the mistakes. Next, we'll be painting that yellow armour, and what better to do this with than the contrast paint called Imperial Fist. Before we apply this paint, we need to make sure that we've got a really solid white scar undercoat. So, as we said earlier, if there aren't any little mistakes anywhere, just take some white scar from the pot and tidy back up those areas. Then, with a medium shade brush, we can start applying the Imperial Fist all over the armour. We don't need to worry about being too neat here, just try and avoid those black areas that we've already painted. We're using a larger brush, as this will help us apply the paint more quickly and also avoid brush strokes. When you're applying contrast over large areas like armour panels, we need to apply it heavily and neatly, working in small sections. Doing this means that we can control any excess pooling as we work our way around the miniature. Applying it heavily means that the paint stays wetter for longer, which gives us more time to control that pooling and move the paint around as we need to. So just carefully work your way around the entire miniature until you've covered the whole armour in that yellow. Then step back and give it plenty of time to dry. Once the paint starts to dry, we don't want to interfere with it at all as this could create texture on the miniature. Using a contrast paint here is a really great choice to get this armour done super fast, and we'll see that this gives us a natural highlight too. So for the chest eagle, we'll use Magos Purple. Again, we need to make sure that white scar undercoat is really solid underneath, so tidy up any mistakes with some white scar from the pot if you need to. We do this so that when we apply the Magos Purple, it covers evenly. Using a smaller brush here, so something like a medium layer brush would work really well, we're just going to apply this in the same way, heavily and neatly, being careful to control any excess pooling. If you do get any onto that armour, don't worry, you can just tidy up with the previous steps. With the armour done, we're now going to paint the grey details using Celestra Grey. This will be the Crux Terminatus and any rocks on the base too. Once again, this is a base paint, so we need to thin it down and apply a few thin layers. You might want to switch to a small layer brush here, as this will give you a bit more control and help us to be neater around the details we've already painted. Now we'll paint the helmet and the parchment, and for this we'll use Corex White. Again, thin this down on your palette and apply a few thin layers. Now you might find that your Corex White has started to separate a bit in the pot, and this is quite normal, so make sure you give any paint a good shake before you open it and apply it to a miniature. Once those details are finished, we can see that this paint job is really starting to come together. Just a few more details to go. Next, we'll be moving on to paint the metallic areas, and for these, we'll use Lead Belcher. This is a metallic base paint, so we apply it just like the other base paints. Make sure to thin it down and apply a few layers. There are quite a few silver areas on this miniature, so just take your time and work your way around all those details. And once you've finished using metallic paints, it's always a good idea to change your paint water. This will avoid any of those shiny flakes getting into your non-metallic paints. 
Now we'll pick out any lenses using Blood Angels Red. Before we do this, we need to just quickly base coat them back in with Corex White. When we're applying this contrast paint, we ideally need to do it over a pale base coat, so that's why we do this step. Apply this just like your other contrast paint, heavily, neatly and controlling any excess pooling. These are quite small details, so you'll probably want to use a medium or a small layer brush here. Just leave the eye lenses on the helmet for now, as we'll be painting these next. Next, we'll paint those eye lenses, and for these we'll use Frost Heart. We've already got a white helmet, so we can apply this straight over the eye lenses. You'll see that this adds loads of depth into the recesses and creates a natural highlight. If you do make any mistakes and you get any onto that white helmet, just tidy back up with some Corex White. Next, we'll use Norn Oil, and we'll be using this on the helmet, the grey details, parchment and any silver too. We can also apply this over the black to help to tie everything together. This is a nice subtle shade, so we can use it straight over that white, and it'll add lots of depth and age. Just like with the contrast paint, apply it heavily and neatly and control any excess pooling. If it's pooling in the recesses too much, just clean off your brush and use that to soak up any excess. Once you've applied it to the helmet, you might notice that it's looking a little bit dark. If you want to, you can thin down some Corex White and just layer back over the raised areas. With that shade applied, we can absolutely stop here. Your miniature is already looking awesome and more than ready for the battlefield. However, if you'd like to see how to add a simple highlight to the armor to really take that paint job up a notch, stick with us. For the final stage of this guide, we'll apply an edge highlight to the armor using Dawn Yellow. When you're edge highlighting, it's entirely up to you how much or how little of it you want to do. You could just pick out the more prominent areas, or you could take your time and work your way around all those edges. The important thing here is to make sure we've got a good paint consistency. We want to thin our paint enough that it glides effortlessly off the brush, but we don't want it to be too watery as it won't settle on the miniature correctly. You can test this on your palette before you start any painting. A small layer brush is probably best here, so you can use the edge of your brush and run it along any of the hard panel lines. This will create a quick and crisp highlight in no time. Don't be scared to move the model around as much as you need to, to make sure you get the most stable painting position and the easiest angle to use the edge of your brush. And as always, don't worry, if you do make any mistakes, you can just tidy up with any of the previous steps. And there we are, your Imperial Fist Terminator is finished, ready to hold against the enemy no matter the cost. You can now go on to base your model and apply any relevant transfers. We've used Sterling Battlemire to base our miniature, and if you'd like to learn more about technical paints, we've got a video all about them. For more tutorials, tips and tricks, you can head to your local Warhammer store, where our amazing staff will be more than happy to help you. Or head on over to citadelcolor.com. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time. Bye!